All right, so today we're going to start the topic of jQuery mobile. Uh, we've used HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We've touched the tip of the iceberg of those technologies. And they're building blocks to help us accomplish what we need to do, which is ultimately, in part one of the class, to create a structure of an app. In part two, which is coming closer than you think, is to then learn what do we need to understand and learn to create the mobile version, the, the native app version of our project. What will get us faster to that point in time about having a, a, a starting point project of an app is jQuery mobile. Now, obviously, we've heard of HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Before this class, how many of you had heard of or used jQuery? Okay, a few people raising their hands, good. Before this class, how many of you had heard of or used jQuery mobile? Uh, one person, okay. So what we're gonna do then is go into detail, jQuery mobile, what it is, how to use it, what it's for and such. The best way to, uh, to see what it is is to actually write some jQuery mobile code. So go ahead and open up your, your notepad, plus plus software. We're gonna create one more time, the blank 10-line basic HTML5 project. Remember this one where we're writing the doc type body, you know, the very basics of it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you create one more time a blank simple HTML project. I'm gonna save it with today's date. Remember to save it.html. And those 10 lines, doc type, HTML block, head block, body. We're not going to start over every time we come to class, of course, but I think it's useful to do so when we introduce big new topics, just so that we have just so that we can focus only on the topic of the day. As we get our project more complex, we will of course then work with our project from beginning to end. So this will be our jQuery mobile intro. Heading one, jQuery mobile. So 10 lines. To start off with, we'll go ahead and write that, as we've done before, if you, pro if you possibly have, or if you possibly think about saving this as a template file, you may save yourself some effort in the future, if we need to create a new empty file. That'll give you a moment to write those lines, and then we'll get started. If you came in a little bit late, make sure you've got the sign-in sheet, and we'll need a sign-in sheet. It's so humid, this, this sign-in sheet is moist. It's pretty bad. I wonder what that's doing to our computers. We'll go ahead and write those, uh, that very basic 10 lines, and then we'll get started. Okay, so what jQuery mobile is, is a framework. It's a starting point. It's also a JavaScript library. I'm going to write some notes.
jQuery Mobile, just put JQM, jQuery Mobile is a JavaScript library. It's a framework. It's a starting point. JavaScript library. So, uh, in essence, that is a file we link to. It's going to be a .js file that we link to in order to uh, reap its rewards. In a sense, it's going to be like um, shortcuts. jQuery Mobile is also shortcuts. Um, we will link to a file which will then allow us to use specific JavaScript commands uh, to accomplish things quickly. I was starting to say previously that we had the code of document dot get element by ID and then a particular ID that we're talking about like you know div one. All of that can be uh, changed or shortened that is to simply this. These two are equivalent. Technically this is jQuery. We're talking about jQuery mobile today but jQuery mobile is built on top of jQuery. jQuery is built on top of JavaScript. I can say the same thing for jQuery. It's a library. We need to link to this file. It's a framework. It's a starting point. It's shortcuts. jQuery mobile is going to focus on mobile development, making projects that are mobile friendly out of the box very quickly. If you think about a, an app, it has a sort of a style, right? Because we're dealing with devices that are tall and thin or wide, but they're mobile compared to a desktop or laptop environment. jQuery, then, is a way for us to uh, write... Their, their jQuery's actual uh, slogan is, write less, do more. Write less code to be able to do more. When we get over to... Uh, jQuery Mobile in just a moment, again, we will be able to write less to do more. We will be able to use jQuery Mobile as a starting point to quickly create interfaces, widgets, like, you know, uh, pop-ups, and um, any of these mobile widgets that we need, like uh, list view elements and collapsible elements. So we'll be able to use this very easily, for free, of course, jQuery Mobile is an open source project, so it's not made by one company. It's a team of people all over the world that are contributing to jQuery Mobile to improve it. In order for us to use it, we need to link to three files, three external files. We've had, remember, uh, inline embedded and external files. Well, we're going to need to link to external files for uh, of JavaScript files and CSS files. So we're going to take this humble, simple uh, 10 lines and we're going to upgrade it to be mobile friendly via jQuery mobile. Uh, on line 6 in the head section, we're going to write a new tag, a new meta tag, which does not have a pair but it has attributes. One attribute is name, and the value of the name attribute is viewport. This HTML, technically HTML code at the moment, is going to deal with the viewport of a, of a website, and the viewport is the visible area of the website. This needs another attribute, so a second attribute with content equals. Basically, here we're going to affect the viewport of this project. Content initial dash scale equals one, comma, space user dash scale, scalable, oops, scalable, user dash scalable equals no, and comma, 
width equals device dash width. It's a meta tag like that car set that we have, but it has a name attribute and a content attribute. This line right here is one of the ways to upgrade a basic HTML5 web page into a mobile friendly web page. Because what we're saying here is initial scale one. Have you ever been to um, a website on your mobile device web browser? So if I'm on Android, maybe I open Chrome. If I'm in an iPhone, I open up Safari. I go to a website. How many of you have been to a website on your mobile device and the text is tiny? It's really hard to see. You have to pinch to, you know, you have to zoom into it to see the text. Well, that web page was not mobile friendly. It was not designed to look well on a mobile device. This meta tag that we're writing here is trying to guarantee that our project looks good on mobile devices because we're saying the initial scale, the initial zoom level basically is one, is 100 percent. We're zoomed in initially when we load up the project on a mobile device, initially scaled to 100 percent. If you're using an app like Instagram or Facebook, do you have the ability to zoom in and out if that heading text on Facebook is too small or big? Do you have the ability to zoom in and out? No. You might be able to zoom in and out on photos and such, but you can't really zoom in or out of the interface of an app. And that's user scalable. No. We're saying we're deactivating the ability for the user to zoom in and out of the app, of our website, just like a real app on the App Store. And finally, we're saying, furthermore, stretch out the width of our website so that it equals the device width. If I've got a device that is tall, stretch out my website to fill the width of that device. And if I go horizontal, again, stretch it out to fill the size of my mobile device. I'm forcing my project to be mobile friendly. Yes? Uh, what would you use user scalable? Well, like I said, on Facebook, you don't have the ability to zoom in to the word Facebook. If I can't read the word Facebook and I'm trying to zoom into it, I cannot. It's supposed to grow and shrink based on the size of the device, the Facebook app, the Instagram app, whatever real app. Our app, same thing. We're not letting you zoom in, but we're zooming in for you with initial scale one, and we're trying to stretch it out with width equals device width. So no need to zoom in or out, because that's what a web page does, not an app. And eventually we're getting an app, no longer a web page. So you can make a note for yourself here if you'd like in a comment that this is basically the mobile-friendly um, meta tag. There are other things that we could add to this content for the viewport. The big idea is that this is our starting point. This is about to make our project mobile-friendly. Whatever we had been making previously, it wasn't mobile-friendly. If we loaded up that random name um, picker, on, on our devices, the text was probably going to be tiny, like two pixels tall. We'd have to zoom in to view it. By adding this meta tag to our previous projects, it should automatically, you know, grow it, uh, zoom us in so that it looks best on a mobile device. jQuery Mobile is a collection of a, of a couple of files, a JavaScript file and a CSS file. We learned some CSS that if we wanted a certain background color, we can write some code. If we wanted, you know, um, alignment or sizes of fonts and all of that, we'd write the code and we can do it. Well, jQuery Mobile comes with a built-in mobile-friendly style sheet that will look nice on most devices, which then we can override, of course, and change the fonts to be larger or smaller or the colors and so forth. But we have a mobile-friendly starting point in a CSS file. So next line, we're going to add the link tag, single self-closing, so it doesn't have a pair. And link is used specifically to link to style sheet files. Uh, when we talked about the <coughs> CSS code, we did that, didn't we? We linked to a, an external.css file with the link tag, which needs 
a uh, couple of attributes, rel. The relationship is that this is a style sheet. And then the actual um, href. What is the actual file we're linking to? Now, here we have the option to link to an external file that is local or that is on the internet. So if I had like jQuery.css or jQueryMobile.css in the same folder that I've got this project, then this would work. But we don't. We, however, can access the CDN version of the file. CDN is uh, Content Distribution Network, which is the fancy way of saying a file on the internet that is distributed. So what we're going to do and say this is not the right code, so don't type it yet, but I'm showing here that this is what we're going to do. We're instead going to link to an external CSS file on the web. Um, this is good and bad. It's good because we can link to any file all over the internet and access these abilities in our project. It's bad because what if jQuery mobile site goes down? Well, my uh, my uh, external file, my related file, is then gone and I lose what I'm trying to gain from linking to it. Later on, we will download those files and make them part of our main project. But for the moment, we're going to link to the CDN versions, the versions that are out on the internet. And yes, there is an easier way to do this, but we're going to do it the hard way first. We're going to learn the hard way, then, then we'll learn the easy way to appreciate it. And so what we're going to do is write this big address here, code.jquery.com slash mobile slash 1.4.5 slash jQuery dot mobile dash 1.4.5 dot min dot CSS rolls off the tongue. Later on, we will incorporate that external file as part of our main project. For the moment, we will link to the external version. So we need the full address, http colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com. So it's pointing over to the jQuery server. Uh, slash mobile, this is the mobile version, slash 1.4.5. We're using version 1.4.5 of jQuery mobile. Specifically the file jQuery.mobile-145.min.css. Now you often don't see two extensions on a file unless you're dealing with web development. Oftentimes we would see simply jQuery.css. But in web development, we often see a something dot min dot something. And the min means minified. This code has been optimized, minified. It's been uh, optimized for speed, uh, for rendering. Basically, our code that we've written here so far is not minified. We are putting it on separate lines, we're putting a tab, we're adding comments. This code that we've written is unminified, it's human readable. You know, it's people friendly. I can read this, I can edit it in the future. .min files have been minified in that all extraneous spaces and tabs and comments have been removed. And oftentimes, all of the code is on a one long line that goes off the end of the page, on and on and on. That's much more efficient for the web browser to handle it's also a smaller file because spaces are not, not nothing. Spaces and tabs are not nothing. They do take up space. They take up bytes, literally bytes. So we've got the minified version. We've, we're accessing the minified version of the project. jQuery Mobile. Let's go now to line 12. Oh, oh one more thing. Let's add a comment up here. CDN version of the jQuery mobile CSS library. This has a collection of a bunch of pre-made CSS selectors. 
it's got the color of the body defined, it's got the size of the, the, the font defined, it's got, you know, the rounded corner defined, it's got drop shadows, it's got all of this design already defined that we will be able to access as is or change it if we wish, but this is a starting point. In the body section, we're going to link to two JavaScript files. Remember, we want to often put our JavaScript as the last items in the body. So we'll write our script tag. I'll keep it on one line because we're going to use, we didn't get to it when we did it last time, to write, an ex, to write a link to external JavaScript files is, is this syntax right here script slash script. We don't write anything inside of the script tags if we're going to instead link to some JS file. The syntax of linking to an external JavaScript file is this. Nothing in the script block. It has an attribute of source to link to some JavaScript file. JavaScript file will be http colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash jQuery dash two dot two dot four dot min dot js. So another file out on the server that we're linking to. Basically, we're getting all of the the power and the ability and the shortcuts, the features of jQuery. We didn't have a separate day about jQuery because we're going to weave jQuery into everything we're going to do the rest of the semester, this month, next month, etc. Uh, the, the quick example again is this right here. We're going to start to be able to do something like this. By connecting to jQuery, we will be able to do this. Both of these are equivalent, but we were, we were not able to do this last week because we had no connection to the jQuery library. If we tried to write that, the web browser would give us an error saying, I don't understand what dollar symbol means. The dollar symbol has no meaning really until we activate jQuery, and then we have the jQuery selector to do all these cool things. And so here it's a little bit less than half of the bytes used to write plain old JavaScript. I'll say here, plain old JavaScript. And this one is jQuery. So we'll be able to start to write code like this with jQuery. We need jQuery as the foundation then for jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile is focused on mobile development to be able to create a mobile-friendly interface quickly, to be able to create mobile-friendly widgets, to be able to create mobile-friendly um, experiences, animation and, and such. So we need another jQuery, we need another JavaScript library, so we need script again, source again, and to save ourselves a little bit of typing, you can copy the style sheet code, and we have to change the end to dot js. I'm going to go back up to my line 9, and the href part, the actual link to the file on the server, I'm going to copy that, and paste it in that source for script, and you have to remember to change it to dot js, <coughs> dot js at the end. Everything else is the same, dot min, dot js. Make sure it's js. Let's save it and run it. We haven't done very much. We need to confirm that at least we have these links to these external references, these external libraries, 
we can obviously misspell this very easily. I don't believe I misspelled mine, but I'll see right now. I'm going to save that and run it in Firefox. should get something like this. Let me show something here. Without, if I misspelled anything, or if I don't have these jQuery mobile things, that's what my project looks like. If you did type all of that code we just typed, it should look like this. Very subtle difference, but notice this font is a serif font. Times New Roman. This font is a sans serif, Arial. The background is also white. This background is a little bit of an off gray. This is your indicator that this worked. Let me put back my code and we'll pause here. If you don't get something that looks like this, it didn't quite work. My code is right here again. Anyone need a little help? This is the code that we need for everything that we're going to do in subsequent days of the class. All right, so going once, going twice, that works for everyone? Okay. So. What we've got here then is we've upgraded, it's very subtle, but we've upgraded, we've started to upgrade our project. Previously, without those jQuery and jQuery mobile references, this was a non-mobile friendly project. And then now that we've started to add these items, it's, it's starting to get mobile friendly. This base font that we have now is a little bit different than the base font from before. It's a little more mobile friendly. The background's also been changed a bit. The whole point of this jQuery mobile is that then we will be able to create a mobile friendly project. One of the first things to do, one of the first and most impressive things to do is that with jQuery Mobile, we are able to create multiple screens of a project in one file. In traditional web design, we would have home.html. Let's see here, traditional web project. Home.html, that's the home screen. Then we would have maybe shop.html, you know, the shopping cart. And we might have contact.html, and that's the contact form. That's the traditional way. And we can still do that if we want, but we're going to be focusing on this new way, which is known as an SPA, which is a single page app, which is basically all sections exist in one document. So the home.html file will have a section of uh, shop and a section of contact, you know, section of about, whatever. <clears throat> So instead of separate, instead of separate files, all of the sections exist in one. It's an SPA, single page app. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer of how to do this. We will see, however, the, the pros, the positives of doing this way outweigh the negatives. There's a couple of negatives, but the pros will far outweigh it. Um, for the traditional method, what we can say is a pro separate files might be easier to manage. Con, you you lose much jQuery mobile functionality. 
in separate files. We don't know what we'll be losing yet, but we'll be losing file. Uh, we'll be losing functionality. Uh, with jQuery Mobile, a pro is all code in one place, full functionality. A con, all code in one place. So. Uh, your project may be one HTML file with a thousand lines of HTML instead of separate bits of code in separate files, uh, which could cause you know uh, slower functionality overall. But um, that I don't, I still don't believe that's a big detriment. All of the positives about full functionality and all your code easily accessible in one place, I think that far outweighs the cons. As for the separation over here, I think the con far outweighs the pro. That the point of jQuery Mobile, a lot of it is lost if you're starting to put it in separate files. Uh, even basic things like you might not think, well, that, that doesn't quite matter, but a basic thing like animation, transitions. If I'm in an SPA and I'm on the home screen and I click a button to go to the shop screen, I can make an animation happen, a transition between home and shop. I cannot do that between home HTML and shop HTML. And you say, well, that's just an animation. Who cares? Think about all the apps that you use, the real apps that you download and use. They have these flourishes. They have this animation and this style that makes it behave like an app. If you are uh, taking that away, that's taking away more of the illusion that your app, that your web page is a real app. Yes, they will be real apps, of course. But the more that they behave like a traditional app, the better the traditional apps have some sort of transition, animation, and such. You're going to lose that by separation. So SPA, single page app. Uh, MPA, multiple page app. So the old way will still work, the MPA. We're going to focus on the SPA, single page app. So what we're about to do then is write some code in our basic file to create a home screen and to create uh, an about screen, two separate screens in one file. We are able to do that because of jQuery Mobile. So we'll get back to our code here. After h1, we'll deal with h1 in, in a moment. Um, we're going to write the HTML5 tag of section, which has a pair. Inside of section, I'll just very basically write, you know, home screen. And then in uh, after that section, I'll create another section. say about screen. So our concept is to make a brand new screen in our project, in our app. We simply create a section. Home screen section, about screen section. If we are to check this in the web browser, we'll be disappointed because it's still all on one screen but it's not done yet. I'm drawing attention that we're going to use the HTML5 tag. This section is not a special jQuery mobile code. It's plain old HTML5 code. But we'll then upgrade this to behave like separate pages is. We need to start adding these attributes to all of the code we're going to write. We're going to add these attributes that are specifically for jQuery mobile. Let's back up to the first section, line 13. We'll give an attribute of data dash role equals. Section inherently doesn't have a meaning. It doesn't have really design. No, I'm sorry. Uh, the section doesn't have design, but it does have meaning. Uh, it's The meaning is that it's separate bits of data, isn't it? This is a section of this data. This is a section of different data. 
but it doesn't have an inherent style or design. So here we will say the role of this section is that it's a page, a page full, you know, a screen full of, of data in our project. We need to do the same thing for the second section. This is another complete <coughs> page. Inside of page, we will, inside of section, we will be able to do anything we want here. You know, headings, paragraphs, pictures, animations, video, widgets, sidebars, all of this full featured stuff. But we're going to separate each section with the definition of data role, page. Now, if we look at the web browser, we're getting there, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. The jQuery text disappeared, and so did the about screen text disappear. Well, clearly for the about screen it disappears because it's now it's in a different section. We never really defined where each one existed. This is kind of an orphan. We'll fix it later. But now we've separated content into different sections, different screens in our project. Obviously, if I look at the source code of my code, it's still there. But what the web browser does is then renders it. This is a whole new section of content. And you've got a different section hanging out somewhere that we can go access. Let's pause here. Did everyone get only your home screen content here? All right, let's check that that works. Probably the big mistake that might happen is the is the code to connect to jQuery and jQuery mobile. If any of this is misspelled, this doesn't work because then data role doesn't mean anything. Okay, so <clears throat> at this point, we're starting to get somewhere. This is it here with no jQuery mobile upgrade, and we're starting to kind of see it. And then more specifically, okay, we've got this concept of separation of content into their own sections. The section tag is plain old um, HTML5. Technically, data dash is also HTML5, but then role is jQuery mobile. 
you can sort of think about the whole thing here. J data role is jQuery mobile. Technically, data attribute is HTML5, but the data role is jQuery mobile. The data role attribute is jQuery mobile. And yes, we have a whole list of what can these, these things possibly be. We can go look it up a little bit later. One role of a section could be a whole page. One role of a section could be a pop-up. One role of a section could be a sidebar. We have all of these roles that we can use for the elements that we're defining. So we've separated then one, one screen, one section from another. Now if we wanted to uh, if we wanted to link, well, we'll do the linking part in a moment, but obviously we want to somehow get from here to here. That's going to be a link. We'll see that a little bit later. This code that I've started to write here about jQuery Mobile, let's actually... We need to put it in the right spot, but before we put it in the right spot... Okay, let's, let's move it now. Uh, I'm going to cut out line 12, and I'm going to put it... Uh, after line 13. So that was orphaned and then now it's actually visible. We're simply including it in a section. Make sure that your content is included in a section or else it'll be orphaned. It'll, it will not be visible and actually it'll cause weird results. Well, we are able to define pretty quickly also some of the basic elements that define a an app's um, interface. We often have uh, some sort of like top area of an app, a main content area of an app, and then a bottom area of an app. We have a header, main content area, and a footer area on most apps. So we have the ability to create that pretty quickly with jQuery Mobile, a header section, or a header subsection, a body subsection, and a footer subsection. So we'll say that after line 12, you give yourself a new line, and we will use the header tag. Again, this is HTML5, but with a data role attribute of header, this will now get upgraded. We saw that when we dealt with the resume, we made a resume and we made sections and headers and footers and all of that, but those things didn't look any different than if we had not used them. Once we added some CSS, then those sections, headers, etc. looked different. Well, because we've got line 9, line 9 has a bunch of lines, thousands of lines of definitions of what does header look like once it's got a data role of header. What does section look like once it's got a data role of page. So let's now actually move jQuery mobile h1 into that header. Check the browser. And what we get is a section is delineated. We have a, a darker gray color up here. It's separate. It's been separated. And the text that I wrote here, jQuery mobile and heading one, now is centered in the middle of the heading automatically. I didn't have to write any code to center it. And it'll keep centered however size of my browser. The header's at the top of the screen as I would expect. Data role, data role is being set to header and that knows to make a header. After home screen, let's add footer, the footer tag. We're going to upgrade footer with a data role of footer. So in theory, this 
will be content at the foot, at the bottom of the screen of our device. And in here we can put basically whatever we want. But let's do this for the moment. We will write h4. And we can put whatever here, but we'll just write app footer just to make it obvious. We're putting some text in a heading, heading number four. We'll explain why four in a moment. And we're putting it in the footer subsection of the <coughs> section. Section. And all of this exists on the on one page. We haven't built the other page yet. But we're building one page. We check the result. header, footer. That automatically delineated it. Whatever text you wrote there has been centered. Now I would think that a footer would be at the foot of the screen, like I've seen all my life. This needs one more attribute. Because at the moment, footer is as low as whatever content is on screen. So if I had more content on screen, footer might be lower, depending on the content. footer will be as low as the content. But if we don't want to wait for that, for the content to be low enough, we can add one more attribute to footer, which will be data-position. Again, the idea of the data attribute is not specific to jQuery mobile. It's specific to HTML5. But the data dash position is jQuery mobile specific, and the value of this attribute will be fixed. The footer should now be fixed to the bottom of the screen, regardless of the amount of content in the main section, in the main body. I'm going to trip up over our terminology once in a while because the terms are so generic section, page, content. But now, app footer is at the foot. Without that data position, it's wherever it ends up based on content. And now footer is at the foot. And of course, spelling counts. This is all lowercase. Data dash rule, data dash position. And yes, we can go look up every single thing we can do with this, but this is the power, this is the point of jQuery Mobile. We're still going to be writing uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but this is a starting point. I don't want to have to spend dozens, if not hundreds of lines, to get this to happen manually. I want to write data role equals footer, and it puts it at the foot. I don't want to have to deal with percentages and figuring out what will line up properly with my proper, you know, breaks and clear all and all of those CSS tricks that I need to do to get this sort of interface to appear. We simply access the attributes of jQuery Mobile, and it doesn't, which I can, of course, override when I want later, because I'm going to get tired of these plain gray colors. I want a nice, cool blue. I want a drop shadow. I want the font larger. I can override all of that. But as a starting point, this is a very powerful starting point. If we have a header and a footer, we have some content in the middle. And I'm going to say um, uh, before the end of footer, line 17, now we need, this is the one that doesn't quite make sense, article. Header makes sense, footer makes sense, section makes sense to some degree. Article doesn't make sense as much. Remember when we were dealing with the resume, it might have made more sense there, a particular, a particular um, entry in the education was an article. A particular uh, job in the job experience section was an article. Here we're going to borrow article and then upgrade it with a, uh, with a jQuery mobile attribute, data-role, content. This is the main content section. And what this would do is this is then going to be the main, like the middle part of the sandwich of the header and the footer. However, uh, jQuery Mobile, we're currently using one 
1.4.5, the latest stable version. 1.5.0 is already pretty well in development. Last time I checked, it's about 80% complete. So perhaps we'll get jQuery Mobile 1.5 sometime in the middle of the semester. Uh, it's happened before. When I started this class, we were using jQuery 1.2, and then they were evolving it and improving it. And just like any project that evolves, sometimes things are discarded, sometimes things are deprecated, sometimes code gets obsolete. So actually, this that makes sense here, from what we've learned so far, is actually deprecated code. We don't want to do it this way anymore. Even though this way will still work, this way won't, won't work with jQuery 1.5 eventually when it comes out. So to be a little bit forward-thinking, we won't do it this way. It would make sense based on these other things we've already looked at. But the preferred way nowadays is a little bit more wordy, and it gets the same result, but it's the correct way, which is role, main, and then class, UI-content. This is the preferred way to define the main content area, not data role equals content. You need to say the role of this article, that it's the main section of this page, and then we access a class, UI-content. This is stored inside of the CSS file. UI-content curly braces with like hundreds of lines of CSS code. And all we need to do is access it. And then we'll put the home screen text in the article. Is our main content area of our section. It's an article. Slight difference. Here it is before, before it being defined properly. Here it is after properly defined. Oh, look at that, a little bit of padding. That looks nice and professional. Whereas this one is, what did you do wrong? Well, we put the content in an article with a role and a class attribute. And yes, we'll just have to memorize this. It's not data role main, it's role. Let's change home screen uh, to a heading 2. If we see that, that'll change the design a little bit. Right there it is without any styling, so it assumes a paragraph. Here with actual styling then, okay, it looks bigger and more important, and it actually looks like sectional content, content in the section. Heading 2. We want to reserve heading 1 to be used in the header. Uh, block. We want to reserve heading 4 for the footer block, and therefore we can use heading 2 or 3 in the main content block. So this we started to build a screen, section, header, article, footer. Write some notes up here. This is still HTML. So we can write HTML notes. We'll say um, section is for a complete screenful of content. Needs data role page. header, if 
assigns the topmost element of the section needs the data role header. Article defines the main content area of the section, needs role and class. Well, you get the idea for footer. So the footer tag plus the data role of footer creates a footer, and then we've got this separate uh, data position attribute, which, you know, sticks it always at the bottom of the screen. Optionally add data position fixed to keep it at the bottom of the screen, which you usually do. Use H1 in the header. Use H4 in the footer. And then 2 and 3 in the body, in the main. Pretty self-explanatory. Okay, we'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. Uh, we've got this project with a home screen, and waiting in the wings is an about screen. At the moment, we have no way to go from home to about. We can easily create a way with a link. So using the concept of the href to make links, we can link from one section to another in our SPA. It has a specific syntax that we can link from section to section. What we need to do first, though, is right now there's no real differentiator between the section of home and the section of about. So we need to give a unique identifier to each section in order for us to link to it. So let's back up to line 13 and we will write an ID attribute. ID we know for classes, uh, we, IDs and classes we know for CSS, but we can use IDs also for JavaScript. Remember we, we used IDs extensively last time when we were writing our random name uh, project. 
Here we need IDs to differentiate our different sections. So maybe we'll call this ID home. And down for the other section, ID equals about, lowercase. If it's multi-words, we can then use camel case. But here, then, now these are uniquely identified. Uh, back up to line 23, we'll say go to about page. We'll say that the that this text will become a link. When we click on it, it'll go to the about page, the about screen. We'll say about screen. This is going to be accomplished with a plain old A tag, the classic link tag. href. Rhref attribute. And in the old days, or with an MPA, that is, with a multi-page app, well, I would point it to about.html. We obviously are not going to do that because we don't have an about.html file to link to, but we have an about section to link to, which is an ID. So we're going to point over to pound about. It's an ID to pound about. Whatever section name it has, this is how we can link from our project from one screen to another screen. We simply reference its ID, the section's ID. Save it. You should get an active link, and if you click, you get the About screen. We're going to take a break here because we've got more to do. We've got an About screen that doesn't look like a section or a screen yet. We also are stuck here. If I didn't have the back button, there'd be no way to get back. So we need to program that. And then also, because we're dealing with jQuery Mobile, I don't have to settle for a plain old text link. With a little bit of proper jQuery Mobile attributes, I can upgrade that to be a really cool looking button with icons and drop shadows and rollovers. That'll be after the break. But we'll pause at this point. Hopefully we've got a home screen. We can get to an about screen, and then we'll proceed. It's 7.08. We'll be back at 7.18. Call me over if your code doesn't quite work, and then we'll be back at 7.18.